Hello and welcome to People Keep Dying, the podcast where we talk about people who die. I'm your host, Stephanie. And I'm Angela. And welcome back to our podcast. Thank you for listening. Yes, thank you. Uh, Appreciate all your listens. This is a podcast. If you haven't heard about us before, if this is your first time listening, we're a podcast that likes to tell each other um, terrible stories about terrible people or terrible things that that happen to people. Just people who died. Yeah. Just a lot of people always die in these stories. But people always die no matter what. Yeah. Because nothing is for certain in life other than death and taxes Mm -hmm. isn't that how the saying goes or something like that i guess it depends on how old you are when you die well no it's just you will die (laughs) will die i mean taxes i mean even babies can feel a tax (laughs) (laughs) somehow irs is like your baby died exactly you're like um please get the fuck away from me right now. yeah you know what i i wouldn't be i'm not saying the irs is bad i'm just saying no one likes paying taxes uh, the irs is bad yeah okay so i'm just gonna hop right into it because we don't need to 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 to, to talk i'll talk you to you share? after your story is okay. over about my story okay so if you do you have any like but there's things nothing you like say about your story i mean there's not a whole lot that no, I'd rather just tell my story. Right. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about Lofi Louise Peet. And uh, she's, she goes by Louise because who wants to go by the name Lofi? <laughs> um, Lofi. <laughs> sounds like a name for your puppy. Yeah. Uh, or your kitty or like an animal. Okay, so Lofi Louise Peet goes by Louise. And right. uh, she was born September 20th, 1988. Sorry. 1880 in Bienville, Louisiana. That's a decade difference yeah, right that, there. Yeah. That's more than a decade. That's, that's like a ne- century. <laughs> Sorry, a century. <laughs> I'm like dying. But like uh, 1988, I was like, oh, she's young. Yeah, no, 1880. Uh, and she was born into a very wealthy family and basically had all the advantages in life. Uh, she had expensive things, really nice clothing. But um, maybe not the best parents. If Don't really know too much about the parents. That's why. Uh, went to the be- top of the... Blah, blah, blah. went to the best top of the line schools uh but louise wasn't the happiest child uh and she started ex- uh exhibiting some troubling behavior uh she eventually got expelled out of school for being too promiscuous and engaging in sexual escapades uh which women were not allowed to do she was back a, in just the day. ahead of her time yes okay very much she was so. ahead of the sexual revolution when they re- yep. realized that women have sexual needs yeah. as well she was like hey you know what i have a body i can get money for this i'm gonna do it um so in 1903 she meets and marries a traveling salesman named henry bosley and i'm surprised her parents were okay with that she comes from a wealthy family like don't they usually are just like I think I'm like Downton Abbey right now. Like, yeah, I'm not really too sure. Maybe because like she was like a whole, a big slut. Uh, her parents were probably like, we don't want anything to do with you because they don't pop up again. Like, they oh, don't they try. must have like just like burned yeah. her off yeah. their family tree. Yeah. And just like they're like, doesn't. oh, they cut that limb and they shut her out. I hope um, they had more children than one then if they were doing that. <laughs> and that's not the right thing to say, yeah. but I'm just saying, like, hopefully it's not their only child. Well, it's the 1800s, so they're probably a, there was probably a few. Well, if, if you're if upper lived. class, you might be a lot of, uh, like, inbreeding and stuff, so. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's Louisiana. Yeah. Is there inbreeding in Louisiana? I mean, there's probably a breeding. I've never been one. to Louisiana. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, sorry, Louisiana. We're not <laughs> saying that you're inbreds. And sorry, wealthy people. We're not saying you're inbreds either. Just I'm just saying back in the days, yeah. that's what back well, wealthy people used to do to keep the money uh, in the families. Yes. Uh, so she marries Henry and the relationship starts off pretty great. Uh, she ends up going on the road with him while he works. Uh, but eventually she starts to grow tired, uh, of being left alone so much. And she starts having an affair with another man. And then one day Henry comes home, finds Louise in bed with this other man and then reportedly shoots and kills himself. After his death, Louise sells all of Henry's belongings uh, and moves to Boston, where she starts working as a high sec- high class sex worker, uh, often making house calls and would steal from her clients' wives as a side hustle uh, because Louise ain't giving no shits. No. No. But it also sounds like she would 
be able to pull off a high class thing because she grew yeah. up the right upbringing yeah. to know how yeah. to act. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so she actually was able to do that for a really long time. But then like her clients were like, hey, my wife's just going missing and she can't hold up that mm-hmm. jig anymore. Um, and so she leaves Boston and heads to Texas in 1912 where she becomes involved with a wealthy oil baron joe joe apple and no less than a week after dating him or seeing him he's found shot to death oh no and Luis is arrested and tried for his murder however she claims self-defense saying that oh. she shot joe after he tried to rape her and a grand jury found her to be innocent and applauded her for her bravery as she was set free I mean, like back then, women are basically seen as meek, yeah. dainty. And she had a presence about her. Like yeah, she knew how to knew. work people. She had the right upbringing to yep. know how to do that. Yep. That's basically her life, right? She was very, and she like, she had these charms about her. Like men loved her, wanted to be with her, paid good money to have a piece of that ass. Um, and yeah, there's some, she's... We were talking about in one of our previous episodes about uh, a girl who claimed that she was a witch because she's got that pussy magic. Mm -hmm. Louise Pete has pussy magic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hard. Hard. So um, the following year, uh, Louise marries a hotel clerk, uh, Harry Farote. And in a very similar fashion to her first husband, it starts out great. Uh, but Louise tires really quickly of Harry and starts having some affairs. And then one day Harry comes home, finds her in bed with another man and kills himself. He kills himself by hanging this one. It, see, like every time they kill themselves, I wonder if she's doing it at this see, point. I also felt like she was killing her husband. Yeah. Like that first one who shot himself in the head. Yeah. I'm like either her magic, her pussy is that magical mm-hmm. or she's killing them. Yeah. Is what I feel is yeah, happening. Well, hold that thought because that comes back later. Right. So in 1915, Louise is now living in Denver. Uh, and she meets and marries Richard Pete and the two have a daughter. Um, but Louise starts feeling trapped again because Richard isn't making enough money for her lavish lifestyle because she's Mm -hmm. so expensive and the baby is like way too much. Mm -hmm. So she runs away. She leaves both Richard and the kid and she heads off to Los Angeles to like chase her dream of becoming like, I don't know, a porn star or something. I wonder if, I guess there would still be porn, like porn pornographic well, pictures yeah, you would have like you it would have been like early on with yeah. stuff like that like very early hollywood because it's like 1915 but like they still had porn back then, yeah for sure yeah the, she yeah. was still being a sex worker and she was still sleeping her way up to the top um and uh while she was there she begins a toward sexual relationship with a wealthy man named jacob denton and then the two like quickly move in together uh and five years later so she manages to hold this dude down for a while uh five years later uh louise asks jacob to marry her and he's like i'm not fucking marrying you because bitch. he like, doesn't yeah. it's because her pussy is magical doesn't mean that the fact that he because like he's like she has told and he also knows that like all of her ex-husbands have like gone missing yeah. and i think it's very possible that she may have um told him that she had like killed someone don't really know there was an article that stated that 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 was his reasoning for turning him down was because she had told she well, had it sounds like everything. he survived so he's very smart <laughs> well no. no um it was a bad mistake for him to turn her down because then um jacob goes missing and still goes louise flies back to denver to return to her husband and her daughter and it's like you know what this is the life for me uh unfortunately uh for louise though uh five months after his disappearance the police finally search denton's home and find his remains buried in the basement with multiple bullet wounds in his back so the police are like well louise obviously did it because she had given like some bullshit story about how like he had uh 
gotten his arm chopped off by a maid and was like hiding out from people be- until he like got a new limb attached and, that is the craziest like, yeah, fucking story just, she was watching she's reading frankenstein <laughs> and was just like yeah this is crazy great. yeah and people believed her like people believed her with these crazy ass fucking stories like before she even like flew back to denver while he was in the basement, she was throwing parties. The charisma on her must be fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah. Like, she must she, be the most charismatic person. Yeah, I don't know. She is I, I amazing. Uh, but the police head to Denver, and they arrest Louise, and she's found guilty and is sentenced to life imprisonment. However... 18 years later, she's released on good behavior because once again, that's what our justice system. That's so ridiculous. Does. Like she murdered, I guess they own their, like he was a rich like, guy. He yeah. she murdered a rich person too. Yeah. I'm surprised his family was like, that's okay. Yeah. Well, it's just like, I mean, they were probably like, well, she's 60 years old now and she won't be a danger to society. Oh my and gosh. All shit. And it's just she like, killed people with a gun. You can shoot anyone yeah, at any like, age. And age doesn't fucking matter. Like you can be 90 years old and still be a total fucking piece of shit. Yeah. Like in the, my story from last week with Richard, like he was also in jail for 16 years and then got out and started killing people again. Yeah. Like, uh, doesn't matter yeah so louise gets released from jail and then she gets a job working as a housekeeper for uh jesse marcy and then but unfortunately right after jesse mysteriously dies um but the coroner's report basically said that it was natural causes so no one really looks into it a few weeks later an elderly couple or sorry an elderly co-worker of louise's dies under suspicious circumstances but there wasn't enough evidence to link it back to louise so she was never arrested but so I, she just had to change the poison because guns obviously leave like well physical. yeah it, it really didn't say at all like how these people were dying yeah but probably it probably Poisons, was poison yeah. uh but she doesn't give up her gun yet uh then she um i wonder what she can get out of killing these people because like the husbands i get but oh I, just people that piss her off probably it was like circumstance right like it was probably like uh she probably killed the the co-worker because the co-worker found out that she had killed her boss like yeah. and so it was probably like well let's tie up these loose ends um so she didn't get arrested for a the coworker thing because they couldn't find enough evidence. Um, but she ended up getting fired from her job anyways, which makes total sense because mm-hmm. two people have now died around her on top of the multiple other bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she quickly got a job working for Emily Latham, who was a friend, um, and it had actually helped her secure her parole. So Emily and her husband, um, had like worked with like the parole board to mm-hmm. like get her released. Uh, but shortly after, um she starts working for emily emily also dies and the coroners claim natural causes i mean i guess back then science is so different as well but the coroners just like they look at the body and it's like there's no bullet wounds or stabbings like natural causes we don't we don't don't really know. know what's happening yeah and it could also be like she could have had a heart attack or something like that. And they're yeah. just like, oh, it's natural causes from like a heart attack. But Louise could have fucking done anything. Any to kind cause of poisonings. The, yeah. The heart attack. Um, so after um, Emily dies, uh, Louise then gets another job working for another elderly couple named Arthur and Margaret Logan. And she even gets married to a man named Lee Borden Judson. And everything's working out really well. Um, she seems to be doing pretty well. But then a few years later, Margaret ends up going missing. And the police start investigating on Tully's. Because at this point, it's just like, there's so many fucking people dying around mm-hmm. you. And they're always going missing. And the last time someone went missing around you, you lied to us. And they were in the basement the whole time. Um, With their arm attached. Yeah. So she ends up convincing the police that like Margaret had like run away. And then she ends up convincing the authorities that like Arthur. Why do authorities believe her at all? I don't know. Cause she's fucking convincing. Yeah. She's so like, charismatic that like, that's just what it is. Yeah. Like it's crazy. And it's the thirties. Like people like you could just tell a story and there's no, there's yeah. no, there's no internet to fact check. Like, no. Um, so they, she originally convinces them that Margaret had like run away. 
uh, to have an affair with somebody. Then um, they convince like the police that like Arthur is crazy and has Arthur committed. And so then he's like in a, a mental institution and then um, Margaret starts forging checks and paperwork to her parole officer, writing like these lavish reviews on behalf of Margaret. While Margaret is supposed to be supposedly missing, mm -hmm. she's like cr forging this, this paperwork. Then she, um, then uh, Louise uh, forges some documents that basically state that Margaret was leaving everything to Louise, like her estate. Of course. Yes. And then uh, the police come in and they dig up the backyard or they come search the house and they end up finding Margaret's body. And Louise is like, oh, I didn't kill her. Um, it must have been it must have been Arthur. Arthur killed her. And he's crazy. That's why he's locked away in the insane asylum, because she was already like working on her story. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately for her, her husband, um, Lee, uh, who she had actually confided in, um, had gone to the police and said, like, oh, no, like, I, I think it was my wife. Mm -hmm. like, I think that she did it. They originally arrested both of them, Louise good and Good for Lee. Arthur. Um, not Arthur. No, her I mean, husband. Good, yeah, yeah, Good Lee. for him. Um, well, kind of, because after he's released from the questioning like, and the police, like, let him go, uh, he jumps off a 13 floor building the following day <gasps> and kills himself. And like Louise was like sitting in pre in prison, like gloating about her magical pussy and how these men were so obsessed with her that the thought of not being with her was causing them to kill themselves. Well, I mean, was she around when he flung himself? No, so that's not this why one because he was in jail. And apparently when she was in jail for the 16 years, her husband that she had had a kid with, he also committed suicide while she was in jail because he couldn't handle being away from her. That's so... Like, yeah. what does she have? I don't know. That's like, so she, it's like... She sounds like she's a fucking sorcerer. Like, she's so a witch. Like, was it... Did she kill the first two husbands? Or, or did they actually yeah, kill themselves that's after they good caught her question. with another man? Yeah. Like, they couldn't imagine living without her. Like, she She's actually that. Yeah. If it wasn't for like, I would have totally believed that she had killed those first two. Yeah. Like hundred percent until the last until two. like the one killed himself while he, she was in jail, which I was like, well, I mean, it was so many years later because I think it was like five years into her prison sentence and yes. he finally killed himself. But apparently he was just like, he was so distraught about not being with her. And then Arthur he, like, as well hung himself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then Lee, Lee, Lee sorry, jumped Arthur, off. Lee jumped off the 13th floor building now i think it was because he ratted her out and he probably felt really guilty about that and who knows what kind of psychological damage like she was fucking doing she like, must be knows? a fucking like would love to have known what she was yeah. telling these people i would uh, i would really like just meeting that kind of mind is so i want to meet someone who's that enchanting i guess like that has that rasputin quality of yeah. like holy shit you're so mesmerizing like that's what it seems like to me. Yeah. So, yeah, she's wild. And the husband's like, what? So, like, I don't know. Okay, so the police eventually find the body of Margaret Logan uh, buried in the backyard. She had been shot in the back uh, and her head had been crushed. Uh, Louise was found guilty of murder. And this time she was sent to sentenced to death by gas. Sorry sentenced to death by the gas chamber and on april 11th 1947 louise was executed in san quentin california thus ending her reign as one of america's black widows now i'm and really like, questioning how much of a black widow she was though i mean she managed to kill yeah i don't know well like confirmed her husband at least two yeah her husband's were dying around her, four of them. Yeah, but um, then and then a whole until bunch those of last people, two, yeah. I thought for sure. But now I'm like, hmm. what if that is the case? Yeah. I have no idea. But they, she's still classified as a black widow. Um, and yeah, that was my crazy story of Lofi Louise Pete. And all I can le learn from this is like, don't give your child a shitty name because they'll grow up to be a murdering sex worker. You don't know that. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow has a child named Apple. Yeah, okay. well, Gwyneth Paltrow's child has every advantage in life. Yes, and so it's not like she did too. Lofi 
also uh, had every advantage in life. <laughs> so I'm yeah, just I saying. I suppose. So my story is a story I found after we had discussed what we would do do if we had children and we found out that someone had um like touched our children in any way oh, yeah. we would murder them mm -hmm. this story is that story oh did i leave that in on the podcast i think you did yeah i think yeah we actually no i listened to it and we for sure did and I was thinking so about cutting that out but maybe i didn't all right so this like i'm always curious about the other perspective i guess and so that's why i wanted to cover the story and hopefully it's not gonna make you yeah. i'm sure i'm sure i'll be fine i know she gave me like a, a trigger warning. a trigger warning but i don't want so, i don't know if you want to keep that in because this would be a very specific kind of trigger warning i mean yeah but if it's specific trigger warning to me it may be a specific trigger warning to other people yes. so this is us giving a warning to people because it, it does involve children and, and a manipulation of children the manipulation of children yes uh, so I am ready. Tell me. All right. So Leon Gary Plosh. I, how, how do you say that name? I'm going to ask you. Plosh? Plosh? I would say Plosh. Plosh. I'm not going to ever say that last name probably. <laughs> um, Leon Gary Plosh, who goes by Gary, was okay. born November 10th, 1945. He lived in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and in 1984 was separated with his wife. Yeah. We're just hitting up Louisiana today. Mm -hmm. What are the chances? I don't even know why, how like how this <laughs> happened, but it was it was good. So on February 1984, because I'm gonna go right into it, mm -hmm. every parent's nightmare became reality as Gary's 11 year old son Jody was kidnapped by his 25 year old karate instructor Jeffrey Doucette. Oh, shit. Jody's abuse started one day when he was in class, and Jeffrey asked the students who wanted to learn how to drive. So Jody's hand shot up, and the next thing he knew, he was on Jeffrey's lap steering a car. Then he said, but then his hands were in my lap, and I was thinking, what's going on here? Maybe it's an accident. So I didn't say anything, but now I know he was testing the boundaries, which is what Jody said in an interview. Yeah. Jeffrey. Okay. So Jody's still alive. Jody is still alive. Jeffrey would stop practice and send the rest of the kids to 7-Eleven for snacks, but not you, Jody. I need you to do some extra work for me. Um, the no. yeah, so you can kind of see what happens yeah. from here. Okay. So Jody came up with excuses as to why he no longer wanted to go, and Jeffrey would come to his home and drag him to practice. And his mom would let him go because she thought coaches knew best, which. Yeah. I, I mean, get that's not yeah. her fault at all. That's no. what you would assume. You put your faith into those people that they're not going to hurt your children. Exactly. Because they work with children. All day. Yeah. yeah. So one day, Jeffrey took Jody to a bus from Port Arthur, Texas, bound to Los Angeles and end up in a motel in Anaheim, California. I think mm -hmm. he might have been in Texas for like some sort of like sports karate okay. thing. That's what it sounds like. And that's where he sexually assaulted and molested him. Um, and police searched the country to find Jody and eventually found him after Jeffrey let Jody call his mother from the motel 10 days later. Okay, so this is when he kidnapped him, right? He kidnapped him okay, in February. Then, yeah, and then took him on the bus rides. And then for 10 okay. days, he was in Anaheim okay, with okay. Jody. So California police raided the motel and arrested Jeffrey without incident. Jody was returned to his family on March 1st, 1984. Mm -hmm. At this point, Gary had heard reports that Jeffrey had been sexually assaulting Jody for at least a year. Jeffrey would also confess to molesting other children as well, which isn't very surprising because that's usually what happens. Okay, so the little boy was molesting other no, boys no, no. or the, the, the karate instructor the karate Jeffrey. teacher was molesting yeah other so jeffrey boys. Okay. was molesting the other okay. children sorry there's a lot of j's going on <laughs> um he told a television crew like G gary told the television crew that he was unaware of what was happening which yeah. is usually the case and he felt completely helpless gary's other son mikey which is, you know, Jody's other brother, yeah. would go on to say that he was a prankster, but he hated to get pranked. He always used to tell me, I don't get even, I get ahead. These words will reflect oh, what would okay. happen next. On March 16th, 1984, 
Jeffrey was flown from California to Baton Rouge Metropolitan Airport to face trial. Okay. Jeffrey arrived and was led in handcuffs by police officers through the airport. And Gary's friends with several high-ranking police officers in Baton Rouge PD, so many believed that he had been tipped off by his friends in the department. Yeah, he was. But he wasn't. He actually was found at an employee of a TV station, WBRZ-TV, informed Gary of Jeffrey's arrival. Because the media would also know, because they were also there for recording. I still think the police probably told him some stuff. Well, they admitted to it. The news crew actually did tell, like, say that they oh. told Gary. So the news crew was there to record the arrival of Jeffrey. So they yeah. also knew the exact time and everything. And Gary was also at the airport where the phones were talking to his best friend, Jimmy. He wore a baseball cap and sunglasses, so no one would recognize him. As Jeffrey arrived and passed by the news crew, he also walked by Gary. And Gary whispered to his friend Jimmy on the phone, here he comes. You're about to hear a shot. Yep. Gary then took out his 38 snub nose revolver from his right boot and fired a single shot at Jeffrey directly at the right side of Jeffrey's head from about three feet away. Wow. Oh, see, I don't know how I feel about this because it's like, because it's not a heat of the moment. It's clearly a prolonged hatred planned out but hatred it was one of those things where i read it and i was like i just i feel for i feel for gary yeah you know i, mean, I don't even I, have kids but i don't need to have kids yeah. to know that feeling of like fuck this guy yeah so jeffrey immediately fell to the floor and gary placed his gun down before the police restrained him because he wasn't looking to die yeah no he was just looking to kill, kill. the kid that he looked at as like the molester of yeah. his child. Yeah. The, his child, the abuser of his child. Yeah. The entire incident was captured on videotape by news crew, which you can find on YouTube. Oh my God, it's on YouTube? Yes, it is. Ah, oh, fuck. The officers that restrained Gary recognized him and was captured on film saying, Gary, why? Why, Gary? Jeffrey died the next day. Good. Gary was initially charged with second-degree murder, but agreed to a plea bargain of no contest manslaughter. June, his ex-wife, came to visit him that night in lockup and said to him, you're going to hell for this. You know that, right? And Gary was just like, I know. He doesn't care. It's... Um, Because murder is still, you know, looked down upon in the Bible. That's why. No, it is. But at the same time, it's just like... It's such a tricky situation yeah. because on one end he's teaching his son something because like as someone whose parents did nothing, yeah, it's like having some sort of extreme. But like my dad did come to me like years later and he was all just like, uh, were you ever upset that I never like went and like, you know, punched his face in or whatever. And I remember saying to him at the time, like, what would that have done? Mm-hmm. Well, like you would have then gone to jail because realistically my dad would have probably ended up spending more time in jail than, than the other guy did. Yeah. So, um, but it's like, but now as I'm like older and I like look back at the situation, I'm just like, wow, you guys failed so much. It's like, I wish that they would have done something. Yeah. So it's sort of like, because they did nothing, I want them to do something. But, but then I because, bet you because, yeah, because he did something, Jody has yeah. very differing yeah. opinions, which I do have. Because he probably would have rather had his dad. Yeah. Instead of. Well, Gary didn't go to jail. Well, yeah, but yes. still. So he mm-hmm. was sentenced to six years suspended with five years probation and 300 hours of community service, Jeez. which he completed in 1989. And other than the pretrial jail time, Gary never spent a night in prison for shooting Jeffrey. Interesting. Now, is that because, like, because they knew that Gary had molested his kid? I th- you mean, like, Jeffrey? Sorry, because Jeffrey had molested Jody? Yeah. Hmm. And it helped that Dr. Edward P. Uzi, who is like a psychiatrist, uh, had a conclusion that Gary could not tell the difference between right and wrong when he killed Jeffrey. He probably just only saw anger. Yeah, but I mean, he planned it. And it is also noted that Jeffrey had been abusing Jody months prior to the kidnapping and that Jeffrey had taken advantage of the fact that Gary was separated from his wife. 
Yeah. But so like I mean, pedophiles they are all, yeah. yeah. They painted Jeffrey as like the master manipulator. So you know, one of yeah, those. of course yeah. they do. But at I, the same time, Gary still planned this. Yes. Like he waited at like it but, wasn't like he was walking down the street and he just saw him and was like. Oh, f- overcome with emotion. And then beat the shit out of him. And then him. beat the shit out of him. Or shot yeah. him because he was, like, overcome with emotion. I don't believe the whole, like, oh, he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, he fucking did. The, well, the reason why he was kind of let go easily was because Judge Frank Saya um, ruled that sending Gary to prison wouldn't help anyone. Yeah. And that there was virtually no risk of him committing another crime. No. Because he had no pre-anything. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's It's one of those things. It is. Mike Bartnett, a sheriff's deputy who was part of the investigation team and one of the sheriff's officers who held Jeffrey in custody because he was one of the people, yeah, who was bringing Jeffrey from the airport yeah. back, said Gary broke the law, but he did what other parents feel like doing. And I think that's the reason why people are a lot more. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of him. people think about stealing a car, but the people that steal the car still go to fucking jail. Yeah. Like, it's it's not to say that two wrongs don't make a right, but it like I have an issue with the fact that it was a year later and it was planned. Well, I mean, I like still if it was issue, like there's like other killings where I still don't understand how they got free. Yeah, like the Yoshi story still just boggles it's my just, mind. But like I understand that like yeah has some sympathy for this Gary guy, but it's just like I mean. It, but know. but it was it, it was in the conversation of what we would have done if we were parents and we found out something had happened to our children. We had said in the podcast that yeah, I would, would but probably. I don't think it would be. I don't think I, don't think I would be right. I'm just saying I probably no, done it. I don't think I would plan it out. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't think that I would let it. I mean, maybe I would. Who the fuck knows? Yeah, but it's one of those things where I'm not it's really the pl- sure. It's the planning of it. It's the premeditation of it. Yeah, that, that made me. it. Yeah, I mean, that's why it was kind of confusing. I thought for sure he would get caught Versus for a crime murder. Of passion. Yeah, like if I found out that someone had touched my kid and then I went over there and like and I killed them, like I hope that a jury would have a little bit of sympathy for yeah. me based off of you know X, Y, and Z. But if it was like a year later, two years later, five years later. But it was, it was um, a couple of days after. I thought it, it was a year. No, it was, he, he was brought back from California cause he was still being processed in California. So oh. in on you know, like March 15th, I think is what I said. Um, yeah. On March 16th, which is, 16 days after they got Jody back is when oh he went I to thought the it was a year it was, it was later fre- it was pretty still fresh okay never mind it was still pretty fresh yeah I'm not it's <sighs> still, still premeditated because it's still two weeks yeah. of time but it is still fresh it wounds. changes it a little bit for me yeah. I thought it was I thought you had said a year later when he was being transferred <laughs> oh no anyways so um, where was I? Okay. So after the trial ended, the country moved on to the next big tri- true crime event, which is whatever country, whatever it does. Yeah. And Gary went back to a semi-regular life. He returned to work as a heavy equipment salesman during the day and volunteered in the evening to coach many of his kids' sports teams. Like he never committed another crime ever again because it's not. Yeah. But- yeah. He's not that type of person. It's well, just good. So Gary would pop up in interviews every once in a while, and there was an ESPN special report titled A Time to Kill, the Jody Plosh story. Huh. And Gary said that he didn't regret shooting Jeffrey and would do it again if he had to do it all over again. Probably. Yeah. The video well, because he really didn't get that much against him. No. Like, it wasn't that bad of a... And a video clip of the killing was used in the film Bowling for Columbine, which I don't remember because I remember watching that movie like a long time ago. But Why would I don't they even, have that? Because footage? they were talking about the guns. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's been uploaded to YouTube where it has more than 20 million views currently. Interesting. Um, Gary suffered a stroke in 2011 and died in 2014 at the age of 64 at a nursing home after another stroke. And he was fondly remembered by his family and friends as a loving family man who enjoyed cracking jokes. Okay. Okay. But um, from then on, I'm going to talk more about Jody because I've never really been able to, I guess, get into the mind of someone who went through something like that and then like what they would feel. Yeah. And so Jody will go on to advocate for violence prevention, serving an executive board on the executive board for men against violence. Mm-hmm. And he also worked at Victim Services Center of mm-hmm. Montgomery County, a comprehensive crime victim center in Norristown, Pennsylvania. Good for him. Mm-hmm. He would later say that he didn't want anyone to die. He probably didn't. 
And he said, I didn't want him to die. I just wanted him to stop. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. And it was because of his very unique perspective that he was able to understand the victim's viewpoint of why they stay silent, like why children don't tell their parents. Yeah. She said, I got a letter once from a woman who wrote, I told my daughter, daughter, if somebody ever touches you inappropriately, it's not murder. It's worse than murder. It kills a child's soul. Yep. And so what's the little girl supposed to do if she ever gets molester? She doesn't want her soul to die, so she doesn't tell anybody. And Jody would say about his dad, Gary, my dad was absolutely too extreme. He used to tell people, if anybody ever touches my kid, I'll kill him. I knew he wasn't kidding. That's why I couldn't tell anybody. And that's exactly what he ended up doing. Well, yeah. And that, like, yeah. Because the child is going to internalize that completely different. Yes. You know I mean? And like, I never thought about it that way, honestly, because I always would I always would say, like, if I had a child and something happened to my child, I would probably kill someone. But uh, you can't say that to a child. And you can't no. really think that way either because you have to be – it has to be one of those things where it's like we live in a civilized world where we're supposed to be more forgiving and we have to move on from tragedies regardless of how shitty they are. Uh, we're yeah. supposed to. Well, I mean, that's what people expect us to. But yeah. at the same time, um, don't fucking molest children. Yes. Don't fucking – yeah. Like, like that's, that's rule number one always. Just – it shouldn't even be a rule. It should just be a thing that you just don't do. But yeah. Like <clears> – <throat> As like as shitty as because when you kill a molester, I mean, you've probably just saved a thousand other children. Yes. Um, when you molest a child like and it's not in every single case, but a lot of times that child will then grow up and molest other children, molest their own children. And it's a fucking cycle that like breeds on for for fucking ever. And so. Yeah, I'm very much on a, if you had to choose between killing a pedophile or getting children molested, uh, kill the fucking pedophile. Yeah, and that's exactly probably what Gary thought. And that's why, like, it's one of those stories I read where I'm just, like, so conflicting of, like, he shouldn't kill anyone, but at the same time, it's like, God, how many children do you fucking save, though? Yeah. Because Jody, like, Jeffrey would have gone now. For sure. Oh yeah, we don't. We don't fucking no. Pedophile. They don't. Pedophiles surf. do so much fucking damage, and we really don't lock them away or For treat long them yeah. like the criminals that they are. Yeah, because it is lasting damage when you molest a child. Yes, it is very very hard. It is yeah. We just don't seem to understand like the extent of how terrible it is. And each child, each child will like process it differently, process it completely differently. Mm-hmm. It depends on how their family and their friends and their support system like takes care of them afterwards. And it also like depends like on, on the child themselves because like it could happen like one time or it could happen a hundred times and like they can either be. I don't know. Sometimes like thought. sometimes go through that terrible event and they're, they're they can they yeah, can cope they, with it. They can compartmentalize and yeah. they can deal with it. Other some people are good at that and some people stuff, aren't. And some people aren't. Yeah. Some people like you know, they like I said, they become destructive and abusive in the in their own stuff. I really hope Jody didn't. Yes. He, um, it doesn't sound like he did yeah. because, you know, he has his own website and it, that's what I found yeah, out. Like he, information. he wants to help other other victims Mm -hmm. probably because it was also amplified a lot by his dad killing someone and him being also interviewed constantly about this event for the rest of his life yeah and like where it's like he never gets to it was one thing that like maybe he would have been able to forget about it Mm -hmm. but his dad doing that made it so that he he never will no never will so he said my dad went to the airport figuring he was going to die he said either jeff or him was going to die that night yeah, that's really extreme. And he said, it's not right to take someone's life. But when someone is that bad of a person, it doesn't bother you as much in the long run, which no. is also true. Yeah. Like you shouldn't kill people. But then people are, I think it's, I have no idea, but people are more likely to be, I guess, like, I guess, they'll, they'll let it go. They'll be more forgiving mm-hmm. about something like that. Mm-hmm. 
um i think that's the reason why like tv shows like dexter is so liked because he only killed people who did terrible things yeah. and that's the Which, reason two wrongs don't make a right, right? But, but you can forgive him really more. gonna cry yeah over a murderer yeah. or a rapist or anyone dying like no yeah. one yeah so about having kids someday jody says i don't want kids do i want not want them because of what happened probably Mm-hmm. And then I think the people were questioning if he was gay because he wasn't in a relationship. But he said, and I'm not gay. I like women. I just, my cousin lost his child at six years old and I don't ever want to feel that kind of pain. Yeah. Like he doesn't, yes. So he doesn't want to like, having kids is a lot. Yeah. And when you're abused as a kid, you have like a sense of empathy. And I completely understand why he wouldn't, want to have kids Mm -hmm. like for not just because of his abuse and maybe he is scared that he'll abuse his kids because like he just he doesn't know boundaries or doesn't know this or you know maybe he's afraid that of what he'll do when his if his child's ever molested like maybe he'll fall follow the same path as his dad or he just doesn't want to exactly like he said he doesn't want to have to deal with the pain of losing a child Mm -hmm where he's had experiences of that happening like they're all valid and it's i hate when people are like you don't have a girlfriend you must be gay you don't have children you're not married and you're not currently in a relationship there must be something wrong with you no i mean it's like there's nothing wrong yeah obviously with being gay but no there's nothing just, wrong with anything yeah it's, it's there's just nothing there's wrong. nothing wrong with not being in a relationship either there's nothing wrong with any there's uh, nothing wrong any with any that. with someone not, 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 not wanting, wanting to have, have children kids. it's fine like if you don't like no it's all it's, valid it's all fucking valid it is not our job on this planet to reproduce we're just like here for a good time mm-hmm. a long time so Have june <laughs> jody's wife or sorry june jody's mother not oh. wife june um oh my god there's so many just know, going like on here jo- june jody and jeffrey and then gary so, <laughs> gary is just like well and still like still two syllables yeah, so you're like god the djs yeah so june seemed to have more uh like a, has like more of a perspective in the line of gary like the same like yeah. thought process saying when asked about jeffrey's death if she felt any guilt about it no. and she said are you kidding do you know how many kids weren't molested because he's no longer on this earth yep and she's right exactly she's not fucking wrong uh they yeah. don't stop that's for fucking sure is what it always seems like no. in every story that we cover they don't they don't stop. just stop they're fucking assholes for life yeah <sighs> yeah jody wasn't the one and only kid he was molesting no and like, they, they even said that he wasn't yeah. So there was a story that Gary told um, during the ESPN interview that he recalled from a year after the kidnapping. Um, Jody and Gary were walking along and they saw a man who looked very much like Jeffrey. Jody was trembling and saying, wow, I really thought it was him. And Gary only paused for a second before plainly saying, I knew it wasn't. because yeah. yeah that certainty would only come from after killing someone yeah. yeah no it is that's true that is and it had on some level it has to be a little comforting but like victims you you always have that like thing in the back of your mind the voice in the back of your mind that says that like you're not safe yeah uh hopefully th- some victims don't they've able to train it out or they've healed enough or, or they got they enough therapy and, and like everything else and they're able to god yeah. bless like but for the most part i think everyone carries those scars yeah. and that's and normal that's this ptsd yeah. it's this trauma it's our way and honestly it's just a way our brains are wired mm-hmm. like for us to just always be like on the lookout and stuff like that and more often than not the times that you let your guard down uh something happens and then you're just like this is why i don't let my guard down yeah um and it re-traumatizes you sometimes um but good for jody for no, you know getting back up and helping other victims yeah. and no that's really good doing good some people don't a yeah. lot of people who are abused like they commit repeat. suicide or yeah they repeat they get really depressed um they don't I I applaud people that end up turning their lives around and really do a lot of good work for mm-hmm. other people to make sure that other kids don't fall into the same uh, have the same experience because the last thing that you want when you've dealt with something like that is to see somebody else yeah go through it it's 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 really rough and I'm really sorry to 
to Jody, but I'm really glad. I'm glad that he was able to. Yeah. yeah. So special thanks to Wikipedia, obviously. <laughs> yes, Wikipedia. And JodyPlosh.com. And ESPN, who actually had the most amount of extra information I was able to find. Like all That's the so interesting. Why would it be ESPN? Because I was a karate because, teacher. Yeah, but I mean, That's like, why. was he a famous karate guy? I don't know. Like, I, think, I don't think weird... so. He was like a 25-year-old. Well, maybe you could still be a famous karate guy at 25, I guess. Yeah, but it's just I don't such know. a weird, like... When you said ESPN, I was thinking, like, why would the fuck would ESPN... I know like- Jody ended up, like, doing really well in high school and yeah. doing, playing a lot of sports and stuff. But I don't know why ESPN wrote a story mm-hmm. about him. But they're the ones who released, like, the whole, like, documentary series and everything about him. Wow. But I, like, was looking for that kind of story because of, like, talking about it. I was just like, I want... Like, there had to have been one parent who did that. You know there. There's always, like, when you think of well, something... Well, there's the dad that killed the intruder. Yeah, uh, where he caught the person um, in his like baby's room or something like that. Yeah, and, like, shot that person and then they went to jail and stuff like that. And it was just like, I would know. I'm sorry. I would. That I dude should have not gone to jail, not gonna jail no. because he it's a home invasion. It was a it home is. invasion, child molestation, possible child kidnapping. There's a whole lot. And like he was in yeah. your home uninvited yeah. and in your child's room. Yeah. Like those are all like check, so check, creep. check so creepy fucking um and that's really yeah yeah that's really sad all right well thanks so much for listening guys we hope you enjoyed this episode please uh send us an email if you'd like uh people keep dying at gmail.com you can leave us a review um please leave us a review yeah. rate like us and subscribe do a good job i think <laughs> we do such a good job we're gonna rush off the pat on the back yeah, <laughs> you uh, should too yes Thanks for making it through this episode. Uh, We hope to catch you guys next week. Hope you're not done. Bye. Bye.